Hello everyone. Hi. How are you all doing today? I hope everyone is fine and healthy. I welcome you all to another lecture with Zenith Academy Online. I'm Shravika Jamnik and I'm going to be your teacher for today. Since the beginning of time, man has been very interested in what lies out there. The moon, the sun, the other planets. I'm sure you are curious too. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about our planets, our solar system and the satellite that is the moon today. So let's begin. Our solar system has eight planets, but earlier it had nine planets. The ninth planet was Pluto, but Pluto was declared as a dwarf planet. And who declared it so? The International Astronomical Unit, IAU, declared it as a dwarf planet. This is our main star, the sun. And these are the planets that revolve around the sun. Let's see what these are. This is Mercury, Venus, Earth. Tiny thing here is our moon. This is Mars. This is Jupiter, the biggest planet of our solar system. This is Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. All planets revolve around the sun in a path known as the orbit. So here, these rings that you see are actually the orbits of the planets. This green one here is the orbit of Uranus. This blue one here is the orbit of Neptune. We can also see Earth revolving around the Sun. Now let's learn a bit about our planet Earth. Do you know that Earth is the only planet with life on it? And this is because Earth has the things necessary for existence of life. And these things are air, water and soil. No other planet has these three main ingredients for existence of life. The Earth takes 365 days and six hours to revolve around the sun and it rotates about itself in 24 hours. 24 hours sounds familiar, right? These 24 hours make up a day and the revolution around the sun, that is 365 days and six hours, makes up one year. So every time you're growing or you're older, you know that you have just completed another circle around the sun. Hmm, interesting, right? Earth revolves around the sun and rotates about its axis. It's the only planet with life because it has air, water and soil. Now the Earth is divided into four layers. Let's take a look. These layers are inner core, outer core, mantle and the crust. Think of earth as a round chocolate with many layers in it. The innermost is the solid chocolate. The outer core is melted chocolate, a layer of melted chocolate. And the mantle is a layer of fruit. The crust is the outermost crunchy chocolate. So now, I hope you remember these layers. There's inner core, outer core, there's mantle and there's crust. Let's learn a little bit about these layers now. The outermost layer is the crust. The middle layer is the mantle. And the innermost is the core. The core comprises of the inner and the outer core. Thickness. Thickness of the earth, of the crust, I'm sorry. See here, it's 5 to 70 kilometers. But when you look here, it looks very thin, right? 
that's because the earth is very big and because of that the 5 to 70 kilometers here doesn't look as that thick the mantle compared to the crust is very thick of course it's 2900 kilometers thick the outer core is 2300 kilometers and the inner core is 1200 kilometers what are these layers made of the crust is made of rocks as we see when we keep digging the earth we see a lot of rock that comes out so that means when we dig we almost always only dig till 70 kilometers because the inner layers are very hot and we always mostly discover rocks this is the mantle the mantle is made of solid and molten rock and core is made of molten iron and nickel and this is solid iron interesting right so now that we know about the earth let's learn about our star that is the sun when i say star i literally mean that sun is a star the sun is a dwarf star remember when i said dwarf planet that was pluto sun is a dwarf star it's said to be a small star but compared to all our planets it's very big the sun is the closest star to earth closest here means 1476000000 kilometers and that is the closest star to earth as we can see it looks like a burning ball so the sun is a huge ball of hot burning gases and which gases are these the inside part of the sun has hydrogen and helium with traces of nitrogen in it and the outer layer has hydrogen in it the thin layer around the sun is known as the corona not the disease not the disease is just a thin layer of atmosphere the actions of hydrogen and helium give us light and heat sun is very important for us and this light and heat is one of the reasons that we have life on our planet let's see how important the sun is first comparing the size of the sun with earth see this little teeny tiny dot over here this is the earth and this is the biggest planet that is jupiter which is still very small compared to the sun millions of earths can fit inside the sun that's how big it is and probably that's why its heat and light reaches us the temperature inside the core of the sun is 15 billion degree celsius 15 billion that's a lot and on the surface the temperature is 6000 degree celsius that's less compared to the 15 billion but it's still a lot and it is believed that when the gases the helium and the hydrogen exhaust then there will be no sun remaining and we need these gases to keep burning because otherwise we won't have life on our planet let's see how important the sun is how it helps us the most important thing for us is photosynthesis that the plants do it's a process that the that the plants uh use to make food for themselves they need sunlight and then there's a cycle of oxygen and carbon dioxide plants will use carbon dioxide and give us oxygen which is necessary for all living beings oxygen so photosynthesis is a process that can only occur in presence of sunlight the next important reason the next important reason uh that the sun helps us with is 
द सन हेल्प्स टू मेंटेन अप्रोप्रिएट टेम्परेचर ऑन अर्थ Without the heat and light of the sun, the earth would have been very cold, and we couldn't exist in such cold environments. Because of sun, we also have our water cycle. This sun helps all our sea bodies evaporate, and because of this evaporation, the cycle begins of condensation, precipitation, and then runoff. So basically, this water cycle. requires sun now that we know about the star let's learn about our own natural satellite our moon this is a moon it's beautiful right it is the only natural satellite to earth it revolves around the earth and rotates about its axis moon does not have light of its own so what it does is it reflects light from the sun so when we look at the moon and we think it's giving us light at night it's not actually giving us light it is just reflecting the light that it's getting from the sun rotation and revolution time of moon is the same this is a very important point because if the rotation and revolution time of moon is the same then that means we are only able to look at one side of the moon and the other side remains unexplored see this side we can only see moon during the day right so we are only able to see this uh wait for it we are only able to see this side and by the time it rotates to the other side it is day again so we can't see it so we are always only looking at one side of the moon another facts about the moon the moon has no atmosphere so life cannot exist on moon a lot of meteors and rocks hit the surface of moon and thus form craters this rough surface you can see this is how the surface of moon looks and these are some craters that are formed there is no life existence on moon as i mentioned because there is no atmosphere apollo 11 was the first spacecraft to land on the moon apollo 11 was launched on july 16 1969 it was launched by kennedy space center florida in usa the three astronauts on apollo 11 were neil armstrong edwin aldrin and michael collins neil armstrong was the first man to step on the moon now let's learn another interesting phenomena that is an eclipse we know that the earth revolves around the sun and the moon revolves around the earth and therefore at some point they are going to align they are going to be in the same line and this causes the eclipse our eclipse is of two types there are two types of eclipses there's a solar eclipse and there's a lunar eclipse let's learn what these are there's solar eclipse solar eclipse means the moon comes between the earth and the sun let's see so here it is this is the sun and this is the moon that's come between the earth and the sun there are two regions that are formed here there's umbra and there's penumbra so in an eclipse there's a total solar eclipse where from the earth the sun is not visible at all see imagine you are standing over here and all you can see is the moon you won't be able to see the sun because it's far and the moon is hiding it away and although this shadowy region also has the eclipse but it has a partial eclipse so you you can see a part of the sun and this is the penumbra region The region where the sun is not visible at all is umbra and the region with partial solar eclipse is the penumbra remember it as 
partial solar eclipse starts with the P and therefore it is in the penumbra region. Now let us move on to the lunar eclipse. In lunar eclipse, the earth comes between the moon and the sun. There is again total lunar eclipse and partial lunar eclipse. We have to keep in mind that the lunar eclipse always occurs only on the full moon day. So, this is what a lunar eclipse looks like. This is our earth that is coming between the sun and the moon. There is again these regions, the penumbra and the uh, the penumbra and the umbra. But see how this is. It is completely shadowing the moon and the penumbra is extending beyond the moon. This is because the earth is bigger than the moon. I hope this is clear. If you have any doubts, please put it in the comments below. Now that we have learnt about our natural satellite, our natural satellite the moon and the eclipses, let's learn about artificial satellites. This is what an artificial satellite looks like. Something like this, not all of them will look the same. What are artificial satellites? They are man-made objects that revolve around the earth. The first Indian satellite was Aryabhatta, which was launched in 1975. There is another GSAT-6, aka means also known as, just something so that you sound cool. So remember this, aka means also known as, GSAT-6, also known as INSAT-4E, was launched on August 27, 2015. And it is a communication satellite. So let's see the use of satellites. Why are we launching these man-made objects around the earth? So let's see. Because I mentioned in the beginning of the video that we always are interested to know more about what's out there. Whether we have aliens or whether there's another life form existing. So, to, to research about all these things, we launch these satellites. And these satellites, when they find something, they send the signals back to the earth. Interesting. That's very cool. They also help us in communication. So, our phone calls, our messages, they all occur because of, because of our satellites. Weather forecast, of course. And also to study about our own planet. So artificial satellites have become very essential. And they are helping us to learn about a lot of things. So I now we are coming to, now we have come to an end to this chapter. I hope you all liked this lecture. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts, please free, feel free to answer, uh, question them and I'll answer you right back. So thank you so much and see you, see you soon. Bye-bye.